positive character arcs. They're the most popular character arcs, and with good reason. It's so uplifting to read about a character who grows, who realizes a deep inner truth, and ultimately gets what they truly need at the end of the story. I'm also a big fan of flat and negative character arcs, and we'll address those in a separate video. In this video, we're using K.M. Whelan's book, Creating Character Arcs. You may feel like you have enough going on with your story arc. Why do you have to get into character arc as well? Well, the two are fundamentally linked. It's like the argument between form versus content. One informs the other. They coexist. Here's what Robert McKee has, has to say about it. We cannot ask which is more important, structure or character, because ca structure is character. Character is structure. Before we dive into character arc, we have to cover a few basics. Do you remember the video on character that covered needs versus wants? Let's recap that quickly. A want is usually external. It's known by the reader. It's something that the character is pining for. A need is usually internal. It's not known by the reader or the protagonist, although it may be subconsciously known. It's what the character needs in order to grow. Now, here's the new bit. The reason the character wants what they want is something Whelan calls a lie. Because of this lie, the character isn't going for what they truly need. They're going for what they want. Here's an example. In Ready Player One, Wade Watts' lie is that the virtual world is an escape hatch into a better reality. This is why he wants to spend as much time as possible in the virtual world. The antidote to this lie is the character's need. The need can also be called the truth. Whelan says, in a word, the thing your character needs is the truth. He needs the personalized antidote to his lie. This is the most important thing in his life. If he misses out on this truth, he is never going to be able to grow in a positive way. Your character will spend most of the story pursuing an outer plot-related goal related to the thing he wants. But what the story is really about, on a deeper level, is his growth into a place where he, first subconsciously, then consciously, recognizes and pursues his inner goal, the thing he needs. Ready Player One has a positive character arc. What this means is that the character will ultimately accept the truth, get what they need, and will see the lie for what it is. Wade Watts starts out, as all positive arc characters do, believing the lie completely. In his case, as we said, it's that the virtual world is a utopia that's far better than being in reality. Most of Act 1 in a character arc is devoted to evolving the character's belief in the lie. What he wants is to maximize the time he spends there. And by winning a game made by the creator of the virtual world, he wants to save it from the clutches of a corporation. Usually, another character will either directly or indirectly hint at the lie. In this case, the creator of the virtual world wrote in his autobiography that the world he had created was not what he'd intended. It had become a self-imposed prison for humanity, he wrote. A pleasant place for the world to hide from its problems while human civilization slowly collapses, primarily due to neglect. Until the midpoint of the character arc, the character is not ready to accept even a modicum of his need slash truth. In Act 1, and through the first half of Act 2, right up until the midpoint, the character is evolving his belief in the lie. You can think of the midpoint as the moment of truth. Whelan says, the character has been seeing evidence of the truth throughout the first half of the story, but the moment of truth at the midpoint is where he finally accepts the truth. You can see that depicted with the blue. This does not mean the character rejects the lie, which is why the lie also continues. But the midpoint shows him the importance of the opposing viewpoint. Consciously, he will continue to claim he believes the lie through the rest of the second act. But subconsciously, he will begin to act in harmony with the truth. At the midpoint, Wade Watts tells Artemis, You don't know anything about me. We've never met. I do know you, Artie. 
I'm in love with you. The midpoint should be an action that the character takes. An action that shows they're recognizing part of the truth. In Wade's case, it's that perhaps virtual reality can't give you everything. This is reinforced by Artemis' response. You don't live in the real world, Z. From what you've told me, I don't think you ever have. You're like me. You live inside this illusion. You can't possibly know what real love is. Then she leaves him. Wade continues to believe the lie and chase his need. He upgrades his technological equipment, gets a new rig, he moves into an apartment with a single window which he spray paints black. So in very obvious ways, he's blocking out all of the outside world and devoting himself to being in the virtual reality. The only concessions he has to make is going to the bathroom and eating. Let's fast forward to the end. Because it's a positive character arc, Wade Watts accepts the truth completely and rejects the lie. I, I created the Oasis because I never felt at home in the real world. I just didn't know how to connect with the people there. I was afraid for all of my life. Right up until the day I knew my life was ending. And that, that was when I realized that as terrifying and painful as reality can be, it's also the, on the only place that you can get a decent meal. Because reality is real. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Yes, I do. At the end of the book, he meets Artemis in real life. They kiss. It felt just like all those songs and poems had promised it would. It felt wonderful, like being struck by lightning. It occurred to me then that for the first time, in as long as I could remember, I had absolutely no desire to log back into the Oasis. That's the very last line of the book. For those of you who are thinking, but he also got what he wanted. He won the game and partially owns the world and he got the girl. And that's true. Actually, what the character wants, whether they get it or not, is irrelevant. It can go both ways in a positive character arc. The key to a really great character arc is that the character has, is forced to make a choice between what they want and what they need in the third act. This doesn't happen in Ready Player One. It's actually a bit of a simplistic character arc, which is okay. I mean, it did really, really well anyway. Um, but I wanted to start off with a comparatively simple example. And now we're going to analyze a more, how do I put this? A more perfect example of a positive character arc, which is in Jane Eyre. I hope you join us in the next video uh, covering Jane Eyre's positive arc. It, the link is below. And yes, if you, if you learned something and you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you've used a positive character arc, let us know what your character's lie is in the comments below. See you in the next video.